I said it in my last video about Interstellar Object 3 I Atlas. I said, NASA, please explain this. All the anomalies, but I was specifically saying it about these symmetric, completely perfectly symmetric jets that appear on the Hubble images until the latest image of December 27th, and they appear since July. But now there is something else. And this is a headline from Harvard professor Avi Loeb, who's really into this and is basically listing all these anomalies for us. He says, because the official entities basically say, it's a comet, nothing to see here. NADA hasn't even given us any statement regarding the anomalies. They haven't said, oh, this is BS. Oh, this doesn't exist. No, nothing. Silence. They haven't tried to explain them. They're just all behaving. It's natural. So Harry Loeb says, if 3 a Atlas is a comet indeed, right? Why would the CIA guys neither deny or confirm or nor confirm the existence on records on it? This is going to be a very interesting video, as you can imagine, just by the headline, guys. Let's dive into this. So... The recent image that we have from December 30th, we see interstellar object 3i Atlas um, taken with the Virtual Telescope Project Facility in Manciano in Italy. And we see the prominent anti-tile jet clearly observed in the direction of the sun that's towards the lower left in the image. So what Avi Loeb is saying, and I'm quoting him quite often today, he says that basically through Atlas right now has shown us a number, almost like 16, 17 of unexplained anomalies um, that are not seen in regular comets, that just are not seen. They defy physics. They're they're not. They should not be there. Let's say it like that. We've talked about this. I'll put all these videos. I have a playlist. Check out the anomalies. We've talked in detail about them. That alone is already fa fascinating. But what he says is, well, one could have hoped that these puzzles, these anomalies, would kind of trigger a healthy scientific debate about the nature of 3i Atlas. But for some reason, it's not. Nothing coming from NASA. They have mo reported more about their spacecraft Maven that seems to be lost shortly after it took images of 3i Atlas, right? And they said it's an anomaly. We don't know what's happening. So instead, now we know, he tells us, the case is officially closed by NASA officials. They closed it without any discussion on the puzzling nature of these anomalies. Why not? This would fascinate probably a lot of young people that would maybe then want to become astronomers, go to university, study. No, nothing. Why not? This is what NASA is there for, right? Why not discuss this? So the anomalies, these anomalous features, as we know, and that's what we've talked about the most, is this anti-tail, this jet that is directed towards the sun and how it is directed towards the sun, right? And it's it appears before and after perihelion, which is absolutely strange. Perihelion is the point when 3i Atlas was closest to the sun. And now we've talked in my last video about this geometric alignment uh, within eight degrees between the rotation axis of 3i Atlas at large distances and this mysterious sunward direction of the anti-tail. It has an alignment, that sunward tail, alignment to within five degrees of the orbital plane of 3i Atlas with the ecliptic plane. And then we have materials, the prominence of nickel relative to iron in the gas of 3i Atlas that 3i Atlas is shedding. What's the explanation for this? Because what he says, this could be reminiscent of industrially produced nickel alloys because normal comet don't have this chemical structure. He's not saying it's an alien spaceship. But if you discover that it has that, 
You're looking for an explanation if you're a scientist. So why are there no explanation? And here it comes at the end of the year, the last day, December 31st in 2025, the CIA, the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency has replied to a Freedom of Information Act. It's called FOIA, F-O-I-A, inquiry by John Greenwald Jr. Scientists that it can, and they said this, I'll show you, I'll show you that letter, neither deny nor confirm the existence or non-existence of records related to 3i Atlas. So uh, what? Look at this letter here, right? The letter is a final response to our November 12th Freedom of Information Act request seeking any assessments, reports, or communications maintained by the Central Intelligence Agency referencing 3i Atlas or interstellar object 3i from June 1, 2025 to present. Right? They say we completed a thorough review of your request and we determined that in accordance with Section 36A or Executive Order, blah, 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 um, the CIA can neither confirm nor deny the existence or non-existence of records responsive to your request. The fact of the existence or non-existence of such records is itself currently and properly classified and is intelligence sources and methods information protected from disclosure by Section 6 of the CIA Act of 1949, um, blah, 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 blah. Therefore, your request is denied. Why? Of course, right? So this is always the thing. I don't want to say um, there's conspiracy theorists out there, but they could debunk this very quickly. NASA could just say, we don't know why it has these anomalies, but we are 100% sure it's a natural comet because blah, 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 blah. But they're just like, it's a comet. They, they haven't even in their press conferences indicated that there is something strange going on, right? The cyanide, the anti-tail, the acceleration, that it changed its trajectory when it was hidden from our sight, now directly towards Jupiter's hill radius and all these other anomalies, just nothing. So of course this is fueling a debate that they might not want to have, right? Very, very strange. And Avi Loeb says, and I'll quote him here, he says that this information is treated as sensitive enough to be classified by the CIA it is surprising. It is, guys, right? Because it's just a normal comet. Why do we need to classify that? And he also further says it's surprising given that NASA officials stated decisively at a press conference on November 19th, 2025, that 3i Atlas is definitely a comet of natural origin. So, and he further says, and yeah, he's absolutely right. That was November. He said, if this conclusion was clear all along on everyone within government and academia, as NASA officials presented the case, then why, why would the CIA treat the possible existence of records dealing with a natural comet as sensitive enough to be classified? So if they say it is classified, then there's something there, right? So he says, I'll quote him again, and I'll, I'll quote him a lot, because basically for him is that the, the most easy or simple explanation that would give us, well, some explanation of why the CIA responded in that way to that FOIA request is, um, as he says, that some government officials wished to verify that 3i Atlas is not a black swan event posing a potential threat to society, even as comet experts regard such a possibility as highly unlikely. By multiplying a small probability for the existence of a threat with its high impact factor on society, the sober conclusion is 
that such events must be taken seriously and monitored. Uh, yeah, absolutely, right? And he references the Trojan, uh, the Trojan horse story, right? Nothing to see here. It's just a wooden horse. But if you had investigated it further, you would have known what was about to happen once you opened the gate for that Trojan present, that Trojan horse, right? Um, and he criticizes the CIA. He criticizes them and NASA for not accounting to the fact that this thing has enough anomalies to if it was artificial, and he gives it a percentage of like 40%, I think, um, that they're not investigating it enough. And he references, he says CIA had miscalculations in gogging the risk from the events that unfolded on September 11th, 2001, and on October 7th, 2023. Boom! He's giving them a punch, right? I like that guy, I have to say. I really like it. And so, yeah, what he wants, he says, right? Under such circumstances, um, he would expect, and I agree with him, let me know what you think, that officials at NASA would, um, would like or would be encouraged to deliver the likely scientific explanation, right? Um, while at the same time, the serious consideration of a black swan event by the CIA was hidden from public view in order to prevent panic from taking hold for no good reason when we look at the events in the past, right? Um, he calls it a wise policy for mitigating societal unrest or instability uh, of financial markets, for example, yeah, you have to halt financial markets when events like 9-11 happen because there's lots of traders out there. They're, they're just waiting for that to short the market and make a shit ton of money, parting my language. And you don't want that. You don't want that market to collapse or any instability. That's their, their holy cow, right? So he calls it social unrest is the danger instability of financial markets at a time when the reality of a black swan event is still regarded as highly unlikely. So yeah, let's talk about the public's trust because giving out a reply like this for a piece of rock, a comet, uh, that does not really build trust in these institutions. And what I'm reading from your comments, uh, NASA has, lot, a lot, has lost a lot of trust from you because it took them so long to release these images of 3 Atlas where many people were suspicious. They said it was the lockdown, but I think it was the University of Arizona because they uh, collaborated. They should have the images as well. They could have released them earlier, no, could they? So, um, he says, Avi Loeb says, I quote him, in order to maintain the public's trust, the CIA would prefer not to raise a false alarm um, like the shepherd who repeatedly shouted wolf. So when a real wolf came, no one believed him. Yeah, we don't expect them that they say, oh my God, we're all going to, uh, life is ending, the world is over, three eye atlas, the aliens are coming. Um, but, you know, just look at this thing and discuss, especially in a time right now where UFOs, everyone talks about them, right? All these documentaries from government perso personnel, former insiders that say that they have, that the US has um, spacecraft, alien spacecraft in possession, including bodies and that the bodies look like frogs. Um, I've seen these documentaries from former CIA, NASA, and and, and um, government officials. I ran the probability through AI and I said, what's the probability that like 20, 30 former high-ranking government officials come together and tell these stories? What's the probability that this, this is a fake event, right? And, and the probability was actually close to zero. Um, but who knows? I, I really, I can't make up my mind. I'm always thinking, well, you hear that. Oh, yeah, ooh, beautiful. And this, here's the video. Shouldn't we be like, oh, my God, right? They're here. But for some reason, I don't know. I'm like, 
Three Eye Atlas gets me more excited. But if this is alien and the aliens are already here, why worry about that piece of rock, space junk, spaceship, comet, whatever the heck it is, right? I don't know. Let me know how you feel. But, you know, he tries to explain it. So by neither confirming or denying that this is the best way to keep the investigation of Black Swan events hidden from the view. So... Given that this interpretation would be valid and correct, then Interstellar Object 3 I Atlas basically would be the first case of an interstellar object that is not coming from our solar system, um, which the neither confirm nor deny response was adopted purposely by the intelligence agencies. Interestingly enough, um, what Avi Loeb mentioned is that, you know, he has developed like a Loeb classification scale um, for the threat level of interstellar objects for, for the probability that they could be like alien spacecraft, alien tech, or something like this. And uh, this was not just something that he just invented and put it out there and say, take it, uh, take it as valid. Um, he mentioned that his scale was quantified in three actually peer-reviewed papers that he has also co-authored with Omer Eldadi, Gershon Tenenbaum, and O.M. Trivedi. And um, you can look them up. He's linking them on his website. And he has, and that's what he says, and that's interesting, once he has developed that scale, that he went to policymakers, politicians, and officials and said, hey, guys, here, that's the scale. You should really look at that. You should look at the possibility that 3i Atlas might be a black swan event. And now he says the response of the CIA might be eventually proof that actually someone was listening to him and uh, listened to his request. And maybe they're looking into this, right? So interesting, guys. I'll, I'm going to be on the pulse of this for you, trying to find out if we learn more in the future, because now's the time that we're gathering data from observations when it was closest to Earth. It takes a while, and then, you know, we will have to wait and see. It's on its way to Jupiter, and during the time frame from here until mid-March, we will get more data. So subscribe, guys. Please like and hype this video. Here is the playlist if you want to learn more about that. But if you want to know about the doomsday clock where we will lose access to space, and we will. It's not, it's just a matter of time. And it could be any second now, which is kind of crazy. Really, really crazy. The Kessler syndrome. Check out the video here. This is not fiction. This is real. And everyone should know about this. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in a second.